Good morning guys and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a recap of 2020, the dreaded 2020, what my plans are for 2021 and also a little recap of the resources that I've been using this year, um, some property related, some not property related, um, just to get me in the mindset uh, of buying some property, expanding my entrepreneurial sort of brain, I suppose. Um, and some of them might help. OK, so first of all, a little bit of a recap. As you may have seen in the other videos, um, my partner and I, we finished our Kafili property, made a really good profit on that, which was which was good news. We had hoped to sell it uh, at the end of March. What had happened, obviously, COVID, everybody knows. Um, so we were stuck on that. We were stuck in restrictions, in lockdowns, weren't able to do the work, finally completed the work, uh, agreed a sale in July. Thanks to the backlog of things that were going on um, in terms of like the legal system searches, all of that, um, we didn't manage to complete on that until I believe October, maybe the end of October, um, which was a nightmare and a real pain. But to be honest, in the current climate, it wasn't actually hurting because we weren't in a desperate rush to buy on again. Um, what we did uh, in the end is just prior to the Christmas break, so I think it was the 17th, 18th, we had an offer accepted on a flat in Newport, a two-bedroom flat, which sort of came out of the blue, but built from a good relationship that I have with an estate agent. So hopefully we'll be starting work on that um, round about middle of January. If my solicitor can do what he says he can, then we should be up and running on that. And that will, again, be a flip property um, with the fallback. If we can't flip it for what we need to, then it will also make a good rental. So being aware of those two exit options as well. 2021, we go again, same same sort of plan. I want to do a couple of flips, build up what, what we describe as the war chest, so build up a, a big pot of money. And then once we've got our big pot of money, then we'll be trying to split that up um, between some vanilla buy to let and try and get what the furus call a passive income. Or what, I would, what I would define as a sustainable monthly income from the properties. So that's the plan for 2021. Full steam ahead. Um, obviously, I'll be keeping you updated with videos and let you know how that goes. What I wanted to show you is... A couple of the resources that I've been using this year, it's been a year of learning. Obviously, there wasn't a lot else to do. I've been reading a lot of books, watching a lot of YouTube, um, started trying to learn some Spanish. I'm on a, about a 190-day streak on Duolingo, but I don't think any of this going in, unfortunately. Uh, so start off with a couple of YouTube videos. Uh, Mike Winnett, I've been watching quite a lot of. He's the guy who came up with the Contrepreneur formula which exposes property furus, fake gurus, um, these mentors who try and try and charge you 12 grand for a mentorship um, and end up just taking your money. So Mike Winnett, have a look at him and subscribe to his channel. He's got some really interesting stuff going on there. Shaf Razul, he was really, really, really helpful during the first lockdown. Uh, multi-millionaire from Scotland. He, he came on, he did about probably like an eight-week block of videos that he was releasing every week, lots of question and answer stuff, uh, a lot of talk around um, commercial property, which was good. Now I'm going to talk about a few books. So my nan always said, if you want to get rich, ask a rich man. And using that principle, the books that I've been reading are based on people who are either at the top of their field or, or who have achieved something in their field. So I got into poker in the first uh, lockdown. So I read this book on recommendation, The Making of a Poker Player by Matt Matros. Uh, this was a grad student who went to the World Series of Poker and became sort of a poker whiz. Um, I think he became a professional poker player, loved the game. Um, but again, someone who started off with a passion, researched it, put the hard yards in, lost a lot of money, won a lot of money, and I think he, he's definitely up now. A fairly young guy, I think, in his mid-40s still. Secondly, Never Split the Difference. 
uh, by Chris Voss. This is um, written by the former head of negotiations for the FBI. So again, someone very, very qualified to talk about negotiation because people's lives were literally in his hands um, during that job. The reason that I wanted to, uh, that I started reading that uh, is because I was buying a car and I was thinking, how am I going to do this? I need to uh, try and get somewhere on the price. So I wanted a bit of expert expert knowledge on that. So again, Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. Some helpful tips in there. Um, what else do we have? Originals. Now this was hard going. Very, very interesting, but hard going. This talks about people with an entrepreneurial mindset, how you harness that entrepreneurial mindset, little tidbits to use what they did, how they did it, struggles they went through. It talks a lot in there about Ray Dalio's company, Bridgewater Associates. Uh, Ray Dalio, for those of you who don't know, uh, basically an economic genius, uh, multi-billionaire. Uh, it talks about the way that he runs his company, which is obviously helpful for any aspiring multi-billionaires out there. Next one. And this is a bit of a, a, a guilty pleasure of mine, which is Eddie Hearn's book, Relentless. I'm a massive boxing fan. I've been involved in the professional boxing industry uh, for the past decade. I love Eddie Hearn. Love what a salesman he is. Fantastically enthusiastic, passionate salesman. And you can read his book like you're having a conversation. I think it's also available as an audio book. Um, so, yeah, check out Eddie Hearn's book if you want to improve the sales technique and really give you a sort of kick in the ass um, and push in the right direction. I've just started reading this one. Sure, many of you will know who Warren Buffett is, uh, one of the world's richest men and the, one of the world's most successful investors. Just learning at the moment about investing index indexes, compound interest, loads of stuff that I've absolutely no clue about, but I thought it would be interesting to learn as well as the property. Um, again, every day is a learning day, discovering things that you don't know about. It never hurts. You know, you might read a book. I've read a couple all this year and I thought, well, that was a waste of time. But if you're learning something, at least you're learning whether you you want to know about it or you don't know about it, I guess. Uh, another book, I don't have it with me because I lent it to my mum, called Shoe Dog by Phil Knight, which is the story of how Nike or Nike got off the ground. That is awesome. You feel like you're there with him going through the journey, I mean, traipsing over to Japan, talking to his old track running teacher, uh, getting him involved, going through the shoes, bending up, finding what works, what doesn't work, what melts, you know, what falls apart, being trumped by guys like Adidas and Puma who are already established. Phil Knight, um, Shoe Dog, that is an awesome book. And another one called Ego is the Enemy. A lot of people would say that I definitely need to read this. Uh, which I did, and that just talks about how sometimes in business and in and in our sort of personal life we can let our ego get out of control and mistake that for pride and uh, let that that ego sort of dictate how we how we make decisions. Uh, so that's also worth a read. Uh, took me a few pages to get into it, but in the end, you think there are some good lessons you can take from it. Those are my resources. I'll put the list in the description. Not too tech savvy, but I'm sure I can put the names in the description. Those are the links. That's a little wrap up of 2020 and an insight into 2021. Wish you all the best, guys, for the new year. And hope you've had a really Merry Christmas. Stay safe and I'll catch you on the flip side.